So um, I'll just be giving you a short uh, overview for this uh, today's um, session. For our session today, I would be, though it's only intended for one hour, um, we would be executing the five-day discussion or the five-day schedule. So we have from day one to day five. Uh, if, um, if you could still remember yesterday, I asked you to um, join the Google Classroom, our Google Classroom for this dry run. And um, I posted there for our day one. So yesterday was our day one. For today, we have our day two. Um, in that case, I ask you to uh, watch a certain video. L uh, later this uh, discussion, we would be having the short recap regarding that video. But for now, let me just give you the rules in our class. I, had, I just have um, three rules for this session. Um, please, once again, be punctual. Um, we do not have an ample time. This is just for a short period of um, time. We only have, let's say, 50 to one hour, 50 minutes to uh, 60 minutes, which is one hour. So please uh, be punctual. We should respect uh, others' time. Then the second one is you should be mindful of your camera and your microphone as well, just like what I've uh, told you earlier. Um, it's better if your camera is on so that I could see you. And then for your microphone, if you have something to say, you kindly unmute it. Then after that, um, right, right after you talk, if you're done with, uh, with your answer, it's okay with, if it's okay with you, kindly mute it. So that's it for our second one. Be mindful of your camera and your microphone. Then please, I am asking for your cooperation. The third rule is be participative. I really need your participation in this session. Sabi nga nila, di ba? Um, kahit, kasi tayo mga Pilipino, sabi, sasabihin natin, ay ma'am, nahiya po kasi ako, English po eh. Ma'am, nananosbid po ako. Let's just act naturally. In a face-to-face -face, um, setup, we we normally say, ma'am, nosebleed po. It's okay with me if uh, you are having a hard time speaking in English. I, I do not care about the grammar as long as you could um, talk uh, freely, or I mean, you could uh, answer the questions, and I do uh, understand the, the, the thought. It, it's all that matters. What I'm asking you is to be participative. We just have to understand each other, even though um, we are having a hard time speaking in, speaking in English. We are not, people are judgmental, but please um, be confident with who you are. It doesn't matter if, if um, you are having a hard time speaking in, speaking in English. What is important is, in a way, you are participating in the class. So once again, be participative. What is important is we understand each other. Because in a relationship, it's very important. We have to understand each other. If you, we, do not have, uh, we do not have understanding with each other in a relationship, eventually we would break up and someone would leave. Now in our case, in this new normal and in this online setup, um, there are some people here who are eventually leaving because of the internet connection. But please, even though we do not understand each other, please do not leave, do not end the call. We need you here. So once again, uh, be participative. So those are the rules for this uh, today's session. So once again, good morning. In every thing that we do, we must start it with a prayer. So with that being said, um, I am asking everyone to put yourselves in the presence of our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for this morning that you have given us. Thank you for this opportunity that we were able to see each other. Though it's virtually, we are still thanking you that you woke us up early for this session. Um, thank you for providing our needs for all the blessings that we are receiving. Um, especially for making us happy and making us feel lucky amidst this pandemic. May you continue to um, guide and protect all of us. 
give us the strength, the wisdom, and the motivation to um, understand our today's discussion. May you continue to bless the teachers, the students, um, and our families as well, especially those who are asking for your help. We are asking all of this in your mighty name, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So once again, good morning. May I, may I hear a good morning from anyone from the class so that I could uh, say that you could still hear me? Good morning once again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Though I would not be mentioning all your names once again. Um, though um, our bed is still calling us because we have a bed weather today. A while ago, I was like, um, oh my God, my bed is calling me. Though your bed is calling you as well, I am here, Mom Cherry, calling you to please join me up to the end of this session. Later, you may join your bed. You may... Um, accompany your bed right after all the discussions for this morning so that's it for um the kumustahan session um for today just like what i've told you earlier the the video which was posted yesterday is for review purposes only i ask you to watch the video and i also ask you to uh, note some important information in which um, I've told you that those things would be needed for our today's discussion. Because that video is actually about verbs, specifically the what we call auxiliary verbs. Um, for this one, I am well aware that in a way you are having a hard time pronouncing the word auxiliary verb so let's just have another term for that one auxiliary verb is also the what we call helping verb helping verb i repeat we have the word helping verb from the word helping we have the word help it is used i'm sorry are you seeing my screen not not yet anyone anyone hello Not yet. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry. If that's the case. Okay, so once again, uh, here. Can you see it now? Anyone? Yo. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. I could. Yeah. Thank you very much for the response. So, going back to to what I uh, started just uh, a while ago. Um, the video is all about verbs. Specifically, we would be talking about auxiliary verbs. So once again, if you are having a hard time um, pronouncing the word, we have another term for that one. When we say auxiliary verb, we are also calling it a helping verb. So when we say helping verb from the word help, what do we mean by help? Help. Okay, I need help. Chris, Chris. Christine, Christine, yeah, Christine. Christine, are you there? Oh yeah, Christine. Ashley, Ashley, I need the, I need a friend. I need the help. What do we mean by help? Tulong pa. Okay, tulong. So a helping verb from the word help. We need a help. We need a tulong in Filipino. So it is used together with a main verb. So we, we need another verb to show the verb stands or to form a negative or a question. With verbs, it's like this. In a sentence, normally, there is at least one verb. Normally, we could say that it is an action verb. Because usually, verbs are action words. When I was still in elementary up to high school, I keep on hearing uh, the definition of verb. A verb is an action word. But to tell you everyone, when we say action, uh, when we say verbs, we are not only talking about action verbs. Because when we say verbs, this, yes, is actually an action verb, but more of not all verbs are action words. Some are state of being, just like this one, auxiliary 
verb. And when we are talking about auxiliary verb, we have examples such as the verb of have, do, and be. But please be reminded of this thing. When we say have, we have different words for uh, that one. We have has for singular, have for plural, and had for the past form. So when we say the verb of have, we have those words. So Hannah, Hannah, are you still there? Hannah? Christine, Christine, Hannah, can you hear me? Okay, so she, she left us. I need a friend once again. I need the help. Joyce? Joyce? Joyce, are you there? Kindly unmute your uh, microphone just in case. Joyce, Pan okay, she also left. Don't leave me, please. Erica? Erica? Erica, Chelsea? Are you still? Can you hear me? Will you please read the sentence? The first sentence. That one for the sentence for have. Hannah has danced the night away. Okay. Hannah has danced the night away. In that sentence, we have two verbs. Two verbs. I, I uh, told you earlier that in a sentence, there should be at least one verb. But there are some sentences in which we have more than one verbs. Now, Erica, would you please unmute your mic once again? Erica? Erica, Erica. Unmute. Unmute your mic, unmute your mic. Let's talk for a while, Erica. Okay, Erica, in this sentence, Hannah has danced the, the night away. What is our action verb here? Dance. Dance, very good. With the word dance, do we have another verb in the sentence? Has. Very good, has. Can we say that the word has is actually an action verb? Is it an action verb? Is there an action in the word has? Is there an action? When we say has, are you moving? Are you doing yeah. an action? Are you doing an action when I say has? Has only, without the word dance. Yes, has. Ma she has a pen. Has, the word has. Is there a movement? Yes, ma'am. Are you sure? Let's analyze it. Or, or let's say, for example, I am holding a pen. I have a pen. I have a pen. I would be giving this to my friend. She has a pen. No, ma'am. Okay, very good. Has danced. Those two words are actually verbs. It's just that with the word dance, it is actually our... What's that? What kind of verb? Do we have Adi. an action there? With the word dance? Is there an action? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, dance is actually our action verb with the word has. It's not an action verb. If it, if it is not an action verb, what is it? What is it? Yeah. If it's not an action verb, what is it? Luxury verb. Hmm? What? How Luxury verb. Okay. So, which verb? Actually, Erica, it is auxiliary verb. But thank you for trying. It is, once again, auxiliary verb. But if you are having a hard time pronouncing it, once again, we may also call it as helping verb. So, what is it? Helping is that verb. verb. It is. What's that? Helping verb. Very good. A helping verb. Verb. So in this sentence, how many verbs do we have? Two. Very good. Two. The word has and the word dance. dance. Our helping verb in the in that sentence is the word has. Okay, thank you very much, Erica. Let's proceed with the verb do. Can I have uh, once again you are Chelsea, right? Chelsea. So let's just call Joyce. Joyce. 
Yes, Joyce. Joyce, kindly and yeah. Okay, Joyce, kindly read the second sentence. Do Chelsea did Chelsea did play volleyball yesterday. Okay, Chelsea did play volleyball yesterday. Let's put it this way. Chelsea did play uh, play volleyball yesterday. What is our action verb? Action verb, Chelsea. Play. Play, okay. The word play is our action verb. Do we have another verb in the sentence? Do we have another verb? Volleyball. Volleyball. Volleyball, isn't it a game? Yeah, when you are playing volleyball, you are doing an action, but volleyball is actually a game, right, Joyce? So aside from the word play, do we have another verb? Joyce? Joyce, Joyce. <laughs> Joyce, are you there? Okay. Okay. I think she's having a hard and uh, she's having a problem with her internet connection. Ashley. Ashley. Please help us. We need an auxiliary verb. We need a friend. Ashley Lozano. Okay, Ashley. Oh, we have two Ashley here. Do you have a second name, Ashley? Ashley Lozano, so that later I could just use your second name? Yes, ma'am. Or just Ashley? Ashley. Okay, okay, Ashley. Okay, Ashley, please, uh, in this sentence, kindly help me. Chelsea did play volleyball yesterday. What is our action word? Did. Sorry? Did. 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 Are you sure? Are you play, sure? ma'am, play. play. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just ask you, how many verbs do we have in that sentence? Two, pop. Two, we have two. Okay, what's the first one? What is our verb? Action, ver action verb. Um... Yes. Do. What did you say? Well, sorry. Do, ma'am. Two. Yeah, we have two verbs. What are those two verbs? Auxiliary verb. What in that sentence? What are our two verbs? Um. Main verb. Yeah, your main verb and your auxiliary verb. What are those? The word. Help. The word. Helping you, verb. You, yeah, can you focus on those two sentences? I, I mean, on uh, that specific sentence, on our second sentence. Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. Chelsea did Chelsea. volleyball yesterday. Let me just remind everyone that when we say auxiliary verb, we are referring to a helping verb or our verb that accompanies another main verb. So technically speaking, when, when we say auxiliary verb, it is like a friend, a best friend. A friend always accompanies you. A friend is always there for you. So, lagi kanyang sinasamahan. Lagi siyang nandyan. Lagi siyang nasa tabi mo. Sinasamahan ng alin, ma'am. Yung kaibigan niya. And that friend is actually the main verb. So, your auxiliary verb always accompanies your main verb. Just like in our first sentence. We have the words, has, dance. The word dance is our main verb. And this is the end of our main verb. Ashley. Chelsea. Okay, Chelsea. Yeah, Chel Chelsea. Chelsea. Chelsea, are you there? You are actually the friend of Ashley. Uh, Chelsea, would you mind helping us with this one? Chelsea, Chelsea, are you there? Okay, okay. 
Ah, uh-huh. uh-huh. baka nawala po yung nawala rin, nawala rin. Okay, pero wag niyo kong iiwan pa yung lahat. Ha? Kahit konti lang tayo, please lang. So, who are still here? Princess? Princess, are you there? Princess? Yes po. Ah, yes. All right, princess. The beautiful princess. Oh, please help us here. A while ago, I said that an auxiliary verb is actually a best friend. A friend who is always there. For whom, ma'am? For our main verb. In the first sentence, Hannah has danced the night away. Our main verb there is actually the word dance. Then, it is being accompanied by our auxiliary verb, our friend, which is has. How about in the second sentence, Chelsea did play volleyball yesterday. Did. What is our main verb? Did. What is our main verb? Did. When we say main, sorry. Play. Okay, play. Because when we say main verb, or let's say a verb, an action verb, uh, there is an action. So what's that? What's our main verb here? Play. Okay, the word play. And we also have another verb. What is that? Did. Did. So what is this? Is that an action verb in that sentence? Okay. Is that an action verb or another kind of verb? Another kind of verb. Another kind of verb. What is that? Helping verb. A helping verb. Why? Because once again, a helping verb or an auxiliary verb accompanies your main verb. It's like a best friend. It would always accompany you. Questions, princess? Do you have questions? Wala po. Okay, thank you very much for saving your friend, Chelsea. I, I mean, I mean, Ashley. So let's have our third example. We have the be verb. For be verbs, we have is, am, are, was, and where. Let's have this sentence, Kirsten. Kirsten? Or do we have Jenny there? Jenny Joy? Are you there, Jenny? Jenny? Jenny Joy? Jenny? Jenny, you're there? Hello, Shapi. Hello. Jenny, are you there? Okay, if Jenny is not uh, around, let's have Kirsten. Kirsten, I've seen you a while ago. Kirsten? 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 So who's here? Kirsten? Princess? Princess? Can you see Kirsten over there? Is she... Is she is, 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 uh, she's still here? Hannah po, Hannah. Uh, Kirsten. Kirsten. Yeah. Hey, hey, I've seen her already. Kirsten. Kirsten. Yeah. Thank you, Princess. Okay, Kirsten. Will you please help me in this uh, third sentence? Can you read the sentence? Jenny and Joy are laughing. Okay. Jenny and Joy are laughing. Do we have an action word in the sentence? Kirsten? 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 Oh, okay. I think... She's also having a problem in her internet connection. Naglag siya. Kirsten? Okay, since Kirsten, you have the same sound. I, of, I mean, you have the same, in a way, sound of names with Christine. Anna? Christine, would you help me? Would you help Kirsten as well? Yes, po, ma'am. Okay, Christine. Christine? In that sentence, Jenny and Joy are laughing. What is our verb, main verb, our action verb? Laughing. Laughing. Aside from the word laughing, do we have another verb in the sentence? Yes, well, ma'am. Yes, are. where is that? Are. are. Very good. The word are, is there an action? Can we call it an action verb? Another verb, po, ma'am. It is another verb. What is that? What do we call that one? Auxiliary verb. An auxiliary verb because once again the definition of an auxiliary verb is to accompany another verb which is our main verb it is used together with a main verb just like a best friend 
Your best friend is always near you. Your best friend would always accompany you. In this case, your auxiliary verb accompanies your main verb. And in real life, it's like this. If you would be removing your friend in your life, if you, were, if you would be befriending a friend, what would happen is that your life would never be the same anymore. Your life, your routine would change. Am I right? Am I right? Just a notice if, if you agree. If you would be befriending a friend, the case would be your life would be in a way different. It would not be the same anymore. Because you already removed a friend. The same with the situation of an auxiliary verb. If we would be removing an auxiliary verb in a sentence, um, the meaning of your sentence would change. It would never be the same anymore. Just like the word, uh, just like the, the first sentence, Hannah has danced the night away. If I would be removing the word has, the sentence is still uh, correct, grammatically speaking, but in a way, the sentence would change in terms of the meaning. Hannah danced the night away. It is no longer the same with the first sentence, sentence, which is, Hannah has danced the night away. Same with the second sentence. Chelsea did play volleyball yesterday. If I would be removing the auxiliary verb did, what would happen is that our sentence would never be the same anymore. Chelsea played volleyball yesterday. Grammatically speaking, it would never be the same. Why, ma'am? Uh, Kirsten? Kirsten? You there? Kirsten? Kirsten? Kindly unmute your mic. Kirsten? Kirsten? All right. Yes, unmute the mic, please. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um. Chelsea did play vo volleyball yesterday. I would be removing the word did. Chelsea played volleyball yesterday. Is your sentence correct? Grammatically speaking, let's say Chelsea did play volleyball yesterday. Would it be the same? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, I heard her. She said, ma'am, no. Because I could see that she's having a, a problem in the connection once again. So with the word, uh, with the sentence, Chelsea did play volleyball yesterday. Uh, it's a way, in a way, it changed in meaning because Chelsea play volleyball yesterday is grammatically incorrect. Why? The word yesterday, it means it already happened. So the word play should be in the past form as well. Chelsea played volleyball yesterday. Okay. Next we have for the sentence, for our third sentence, Jenny and Joy are laughing. Let's try to remove this uh, auxiliary verb. Let's try to remove our friend. Um, Joyce? Kirsten, kindly unmute. I kindly mute your mic. And Joyce, kindly unmute uh, your mic. Joyce, are you there? Okay, Joyce, thank you very much. Joyce, in the sentence, Jenny and Joy are laughing. Let's say I would be removing the word are. The sentence would only be Jenny and Joy laughing. Is your sentence correct? Dito, ma'am. Okay, it would never be correct. Why? Grammatically speaking, we, we could not say that it is correct. Jenny and Joy laughing. Is your sentence complete? Is your sentence complete? Joyce? Okay, it's not complete anymore. Why? You removed your helping verb. You removed a friend. In life, we need a friend. We need an auxiliary verb. The moment that you would be removing just that word, your sentence would never be the same anymore. It is no longer complete. So once again, that is the what we call auxiliary verb. Please do not forget what an auxiliary verb 
is simply because later in this discussion, we would be needing that. So that one is auxiliary verb. Let's have this picture. Maquil, I can see you there, Maquil. Hello, Maquil, kindly unmute your mic. Maquil? Maquil, hello. Yeah, hi, Maquil. Hello, ma'am. Hello, Maquil. I'm okay, I missed you. Why are you late? Huh. Ah, you um, took a class. Ah, I'm foggy. The handsome Maquil. Who's that? Uh, who's, who's in the picture? Yeah, you know, Oh, Jollibee. We miss Jollibee. <laughs> we really miss Jollibee, right? Especially nowadays that we could not visit the, the store anymore. So we miss a Jollibee. Actually, we just do not miss him. We love him. And since we could not visit their store, we could not go to Jollibee up early. Let's just have the commercials of Jollibee. I have here two videos in which, please, uh, watch uh, watch attentively and take note of the lines there. I will be repeating um, the videos twice. So here it goes. Good afternoon. Can you take your order? Once again. Good afternoon. Can you take your order? Okay. And then for our next video. This is my fairy tale. There it is. There it, is. it was a world with romance. Once again. This is my fairy tale. There it is. There it, is. it was a world of romance. Okay. With those two videos, we have two questions as well. Am I right, Maquil? What's the first question, Maquil? Let's say you are ordering something. What's that? You are ordering something, then you would go to the cashier. What, what was the question? What was your question? Let's go back to that video. What's the question here? What's the question? <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> What's the next one? What's the question? Can? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good afternoon. Can I take your order? All right. Did you hear it? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I think it's already afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Ken? Ken? Do you need a friend, McQueen? Let's call a friend. Who's your friend in here? Princess, ma'am. Princess! Okay. Princess, lucky you, Princess. You're the friend of McQueen. Princess, are you there? Princess? 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 Yes, po, ma'am. Okay, that's the problem with being friendly. You have lots of friends and whenever they need help, they will call you. Princess, what's the line once again? What's the question? Good afternoon, Ken. Can, can I take your order, Puba? Ken, can, can, can I take your order? <laughs> okay, we only have one, Ken. Can I take your order? Can I take your order? How about the second video? What's the question? Do I need to repeat it? Okay. Okay. This is my fairy tale. There it is. There it is. It was a world with romance. Okay, what was what, what was the question? What's the question? Can you marry me, Puma? Okay, can you marry me? Orion said the 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 guy said, Will you marry me? Okay. Will you marry me? Thank you very much, Princess. With these two lines, with these two questions, can I take your order and will you marry me? What are the words that made those sentences into questions? Kirsten? Yes, Kirsten. 
what are the words that made those sentences into questions? The first can, one, can, can and will, very good. The words can and will actually to tell you, in a way, those words are used to ask questions. But aside from uh, making sentences into questions, can and will can also be called as the what we call modal auxiliary verbs. Modal auxiliary verbs, take note of the term, once again, auxiliary. So technically speaking, a modal auxiliary verb accompanies another verb, your main verb. A modal auxiliary verb, or simply the what we call modal, can also be a friend. It may accompany another main verb. So a modal auxiliary verb or simply a modal is a type of auxiliary verb that is used to express permission, obligation, prohibition, etc. Let me just give you the um, other modal verbs that we have in English. So aside from the words will and can, we also have the words would, shall, should, could, must, may, might, etc. Why do we have an etc. there? Simply because there are lots of modal auxiliary verbs. Now, here's the thing. Let's not focus on those modal auxiliary verbs only, but more of with their function. Why are we using these words? We have permission, obligation, prohibition. Let's start with permission. We have the word can. The word can is used to ask for permission and give permission. It means something is allowed to be done. Pwede mong gawin. Why? You are asking for permission. Or let's say you are giving permission to someone. Let me give you an example so that you could understand it. Do we have Ashlia over here? Ashlia? Are you there, Ashlia? Ashlia, I think we do not have Ashlia over here. So who's here? Ashlia? Ashlia, we do not have Ashlia. Okay, let's just have Hannah. Hannah? Christine, Christine Hannah. Ma'am? Okay, Christine Hannah, will you please read the, the line of Ashlia for me? Ma'am, Ma'am, can I eat this? Sure. Ma you can have it. Once again, will you please uh, repeat the sentence? Then I'll be the mom. I'll be your mom. Mom, can I eat this? Sure, you can have it. Let's have this one. Ashlia, the line of Ashlia, which was read by Hannah. Mom, can I eat this? We are asking for permission. For Ashlia, very good. Ashlia is actually asking for permission. That is the reason why we have the word can in that sentence. In the line of the mother, which was read by, by yours truly, sure, you can have it. I am now giving permission. I am not asking for permission anymore. I am giving permission to my daughter. Are you getting the point? Okay, very good. So once again, when we use the word can, we are um, asking for permission or we are also giving permission. Questions? Do we have questions? None. Okay, none. Okay, thank you very much. With uh, with that being said, let me just show you a picture. This one. This photo was taken last December with my students because I really miss um, the face-to-face -face classroom setup. Let's just use this scenario. Let's say, for example, we are in a classroom and you are that student who is standing right now. Will you please use the word can in a sentence asking me for, let's say, for permission. Anyone from the class, kindly use the word can whenever you want to ask for permission to your teacher. I am your teacher. I am there. And you are that person who is standing right now. Anyone? Anyone from the class? Yes, Joyce? Can I join to your class, ma'am? Can I join your class? Very good. Can I join your class? You are asking for permission. Now I would be saying, yes, you can join in my class. You take your seat. Thank you very much, Joyce. 
Thank you very much. So once again, the word can whenever we are asking for permission and the other one whenever you are giving permission. Questions? Do we have questions? Okay, I've seen you do this one. Okay, uh, so I think you do not have questions. Let's proceed with another model because we do not have much time. Let's just have a short rundown. In a way, when we say could, actually, when I was still in high school, my teacher or our teacher would always say, um, oh, the word could is the past form of can. That is the usual thing that our teacher would say. But to tell you, there are some other reasons. If you would be digging deeper, it would be a different uh, situation. If we are talking about function, the word could is actually uh, used for permission. It is used to ask for permission, but usually not to give permission. But to tell you, the only difference, the slight difference with the two is that the word could is more formal than the word can. It is more formal. So, ma'am, are you saying that we could actually interchange the two? Yes. As long as you are asking for permission, it's okay if you would be using the word can, and it's okay if you would be using the word could. Let's have an example over here. Let's have McQuill. McQuill, are you there? Because we do not have Pat over here. McQuill, you there? Okay, thank you, McQuill. I, I feel na breakfast na ata siya. Ah, yun, yun, no? McQuill, oh. Okay, McQuill, assuming that you are my sister. Let's just assume that you are my sister. Okay. Assuming that you are my sister, then kindly read the line of Pat. Sis, could I try this dress on? Oh my God, of course, sis, no problem. Sis, could I try this dress on? Good, you are asking for permission. Are you getting the point, Nakwil? Could is used whenever we are asking for permission. Mom, is it okay if I would be using the word can? Sis, can I try this dress on? It's still okay. Grammatically speaking, it's okay, but still we are asking for permission. Questions, McQuill? None, ma. Okay, now if there are none, let's have another example from you. Let's use this picture once again. Could you please give me another example of a sentence using the word could? Could? Could anyone? Anyone, please? Princess? Since we're done with McWill and you are the friend of McWill, Princess, could you please give me another sentence? Oh, McWill is raising his hand once again. Princess, uh, I'll go back to you later. Yes, McWill. Yes, McWill. Could I try your question in board? Ah, could I, could I try or... Could I try answering your question? It's okay. Could I try answering your answer? You're asking for permission. The word could. Questions, McWheel? None po, ma'am. None. Thank you very much. With that being said, we have another model for permission, which is the model may. With the model may, it is the most formal uh, mo model verb to ask for and give permission. So whenever you are asking for permission, you may use the word, uh, the model may, but in a more formal way. Let's say you are talking to your teacher, you are talking to your mother, you are talking to a person who needs to be respected. You would be using the word may instead of can. Yung parang may paggalang. So kapag feeling mo ikaw magalang ka, pwede ang gawin mo. Ah, uh, ang gamitin ko. Kaya imbis na gamitin ko, I can. Pwede pala yung may. So, McQuill, once again. McQuill, please read the sentence, then I'll be your mom now. A while ago, you are my sister now. I am mom. Okay. Mom, may I come with you? Yes, you may, baby. In that case, let's put it this way. Since I, McQuill, I am your mom, and you respect me, 
instead of using the word can, you would be using the word may. Why? It is more formal. And now, I am giving you permission. Yes, you may, baby. In a formal way as well. Because a mother needs to be respected. Questions? Do you have a question, Will? None, ma'am. Okay. So, let's say, for example, princess, you want... Uh, you want to go to the canteen or let's say you want to do something outside. Can we construct a sentence using the word may? Are you Mama, there? Ma'am, may I go to the canteen? Okay. Ma'am, may I go to the canteen or let's say you want to go to the restroom? Ma'am, may I go to the restroom? Those examples are in a way, in a respectful manner. Why? I am the teacher and you are the student. And I am hoping next time I'll be seeing you as in face-to-face -face asking those questions of permission. Let's pray to God that it would happen eventually, as soon as possible. With that being said, once again, those are the models that we may use for permission. We also have another function, which is so just a short recap, those are the difference. I'll be sending the PowerPoint presentation so you you would be uh, having a copy as well and you may review it anytime you want. So these are uh, the summary of, this is the summary actually of our uh, model of permission. And please take note of this one. The models can, could, may are also used when expressing ability or possibility, not only for permission. When I, when I say possibility, may posibilidad na mangyari. So, pwede mo rin gamitin yung can, could, at saka may. Or ability. I can dance. I can sing. When you say possibility, um, you may, ah, I may be home late. Sabi mong ganon. Those models of permission may also be used for ability and possibility. Since we do not have much time, let's just have a short rundown regarding this. Aside from the model of permission, we, are, we also have model of obligation. With the model of obligation, we have the word must. For the word must, it expresses a firm obligation. When we say obligation, you have to do something. So you may use the words must. Let's just have a short rundown. Kilian, are you there? Kilian? Kilian? Okay, I think Kilian is... Kilian? Okay, wala na siya. Okay, okay. Kilian? Since wala ka... Christine, Christine, pasuyo naman na tulong. Yes, po, ma'am. Okay, can you read the sentence, please? I can must call my dad. It's okay. his birthday today. Okay, I must call my dad. It's his birthday today. Why is that? The word must is used because it is your obligation as a daughter or as a son to greet your father whenever it is his birthday. So that in that case, since you feel the obligation, you may use the word must. Okay, so let's just have that one maybe some other time because we do not have much time. We also have the word have to whenever we are talking about uh, obligation. Aside from must, you may use the word have to. It is used to show... Uh, that the person is obliged to do something, usually with an outside force. Let's say this one. Princess? Princess? Princess, princess? Yes, po. Yes, princess, can you read the sentence? I have to clean my room because it's too messy. Okay, I have to clean my room because it's too messy. We have the word have to there. Why did I use have to? Simply because we have an outside force. The outside force is, it is too messy in your room. So I have to, to clean. I have to clean it. I have to because the outside force there is, it's too messy. Next, ought to. With the word ought to, or the model of obligation ought to, um, more of you are giving recommendation, moral obligation. You are, uh, let's say, what is right the law, regulation, or duty. In this case, I ought to respect my parents. Why? I have to respect my parents. Is, is it okay? I must respect my parents. It is your obligation as a son or a daughter to respect your parents. That is why we may use any of those 
model of obligation. So once again, those are the models of obligations that we may use. Must, have to, ought to. And here are the other models, should and shall may also be used. Next. Nagbibilisan ko na ha, kasi kulang tayo sa oras. With the, uh, with the prohibition, with the model of prohibition, as simple as this one. You add the word not with your models. A while ago, we have can. Now you add the word not, cannot, or simply can't. Cannot, can. When, when do we use uh, models of prohibition? When you are not allowing anyone to do something. Hindi ka pwede, pinagbabawalan mo siya. Cannot, can. So you are prohibiting someone to do it. Let's say, for example, we went to a museum and then you are not allowed to, to take photos. I would be saying as your teacher, you can take photos, uh, photos in the museum. They are strict about it. You can't. Why? You are not allowed to do something. Aside from the word can't, we also have the word must not or mustn't. So with this case, it is used to talk about what is not permitted. You're not allowed to do something. Must not or mustn't. We are in a flower garden, then there is a signage there. Guests mustn't pick flowers. Why? You are not allowed to do it. Prohibition, as simple as this one, you are just uh, not allowed to do something or the opposite of giving permission when you are prohibiting someone. These are negatives with the word not. Once again, prohibition. So here are the other models for prohibition. But I just want to uh, give you this short reminder for auxiliary verbs or for models. Never add S, E, S, D, or E, D, or I, N, G to the main verb. I am, I am referring to the main verb once again, the word stop. We must stop COVID-19. Whenever you are using a model, never use uh, a main verb with an S, E, S, D, E, D, or I, N, G. Let's say, we must stopping, that is not correct. We must stops, that is not correct. You just have to follow the base form of the verb without any suffixes at the end part. And then once again, one model may be used and may mean differently depending on its pur purpose in the sentence. Permission, obligation, prohibition, ability, possibility. Those are the model verbs that you may use whenever you are thinking of a purpose of permission, obligation, prohibition, ability, possibility. Questions? Questions, questions, please. Do you have questions? Okay. We do not have questions since we do not have much time. Thank you very much, uh, Kristen, uh, Kristen, Kristen, for answering. If you do not have questions, let me just show you this one. Give me another minute for our reminders. For this day, our day two, it's already done. Because our schedule is only for the discussion proper, for our online discussion. Since I told you earlier we have day one to day five, let me just uh, give you a short reminder for the next days to come. Let's say for Wednesday, what we would be doing is like an online activity. May ipapagawa ako sa inyo, halimbawa. Halimbawa, before I end my, my discussion here, I would be saying, okay class, uh, that is all for today for our day two. Now, here's what you're going to do tomorrow. For tomorrow, kindly visit our Google Classroom. Now, let's let's try to do it. Let's say, for example, um, this one. Try to open your Google Classroom. If you are using a desktop, kindly open a new tab. If you are using your phone, you kindly press the home button and then go to the go uh, to the Google Classroom. Let's try it. Go to our Google Classroom so that you could see our announcements there. Go to our Google Classroom, please. All right. Let's say, for example, this one. Can you see it now? I hope you could see it. So this is our day two, our live discussion. And for our day three, this is for Wednesday, tomorrow. We have an online performance in here. You have to watch the given video. I have attached a uh, video there. And then you have to make a reflection paper using Google Docs. 
Okay, we have instructions there. When are you going to pass that one? What are, what, what, what are you going to do? And so on and so forth. For our day four, for our day four, it's like this. Thursday, for, for Thursday, you kindly visit our Google Classroom once again. And then you just have to take a look at the, the announcement there. Then I would be attaching... Uh, Wait lang, we are having a problem in the connection. All right, this one. We would be having the, the quiz. I will be attaching it there. Then the moment that I will be posting it, you would be seeing it, you would be seeing it here on your end. You kindly refresh your, your uh, what you have opened there. Kindly refresh it so that you could see the, on, uh, the, the online quiz. You open, you open it, it then you would be, have you seen it? Have you seen it? Yes, yeah, very good. You can open it because the moment you would be opening it, you would see your quiz there. Then at the end part, you may uh, click the word submit and then after that, I would be receiving your answers. Okay, in that case, since we do not have much time, we could not do it anymore. So let's just do it uh, some other time and right after the, all the discussions later. You may do it later, then I will be receiving it. So that is for our day uh, four. Then for our day five, let's say, sa end ng class natin, sasabihin ko, okay, on Friday, uh, please give me 10 minutes. We will be having a teleconference in which I would be giving you the assignment, this one, this part, and then I would be announcing uh, the highest score from our quiz and so on and so forth. Since we did not do our quiz, we could not um